Trev is a, a design and strategy company. We work across education, workforce, development, and entrepreneurship. Primarily, we teach high school students entrepreneur skills and prepare them for employment opportunities. So which of the program did you do on that tribe? We did a lot of programs on tribe. We did case studies, seminars, uh, learning a discussion where we went to different places to see what has happened. Like we went at the museum as well to see what has happened in the past. Uh, at the moment, we have three partner schools and we have worked with 42 students in the past year. Before that, most of our work was research and piloting different models. And so we created a new model in the last two years called Renovate, which is a school to work employment pathway for high school students. I first got into a connection with Tribe. We went on our campus and they were looking for students to impact their lives and entrepreneurial skills. Yeah, and then we did some um, essays, writing, and application for Tribe. And Hopefully, I was at one of the few students that were accepted. My name is Wayne Wright Akwe. I am the Chief Executive Officer for Tribe. And Tribe is a, a design and strategy company. We work across education, workforce, development, and entrepreneurship. Primarily, we teach high school students entrepreneur skills and prepare them for employment opportunities. <sighs> That's a lot, man. Um, so growing up in Liberia, we all experience uh, one way or the other challenges with learning and, and employment. We, most of the country's population is poor. However, in spite of these challenges, many young people still grow up having big dreams and, and, and aspirations and having wild ambitions. And education has often been sold as a promise of success in the real world. You know, graduate high school, go to college, get a job, um, start a family and you're successful probably. But that pathway has continued to fill many young people. Uh, many young students are leaving high school, but they are unprepared. And so at Tribe, what we're doing is to bridge that gap between high school students and the workforce by exposing high school students to the kinds of skills and opportunities and experiences that make them relevant to the workforce. Uh, at the moment, we have three partner schools and we have worked with 42 students in the past year. Before that, most of our work was research and piloting different models. And so we created a new model in the last two years called Renovate, which is a school to work employment pathway for high school students. So we recruit our partner schools, we equip our students with the kinds of skills they need. So mentorship, you know, exposure, our project development, we matched them with paid internship and, and we facilitated them to leave high school already equipped with the foundational skills to, to be employed. And this model was created based on a study we did in 2020. We took three groups of young people, nearly 100 young people. One group was high, earning high income, another group was vulnerably employed, another group was unemployed. And so these are young people who went to similar high schools. And so we were very concerned about what was the defining factor for, for these young people. And so we did the assessment and we realized that the people who were in the category of productive employment um, had experienced two of a series of activities. Either they had a mentor early on, they were part of a professional development program, they had studied abroad, uh, they had a family that was entrepreneur, you know, of some sort, they had been part of some sort of professional development program. The group that was vulnerably employed had experienced less of this, and the group that was unemployed had experienced none of this at all. And so the, the difference between successful and unsuccessful young people was really the access, early access and exposure to skills, to opportunities, and, to expo and the exposure that they receive, which, you know, is not uh, typically accessible to every young person. And so we are bridging that gap by ensuring that every young person that we encounter here 
is equipped with the kinds of skills, tools, and opportunities that make them productively uh, relevant to the workforce. In any given business environment, there are three factors that primarily impact the growth of initiatives and endeavors. The first is infrastructure. The second is talents. The third is resources. And resources can be a function of the availability of decent infrastructure and talents. In Liberia, we lack most of the basic infrastructure we need. Access to stable electricity, internet, you know, it's, it's expensive. Beyond just that is the fact that we also have a very shallow talent pool. This, this shallow talent pool is also a result of the unproductive education system that we have, wherein many young people are not leaving school equipped with the kinds of skills that make them employable, that make them quite relevant. Because schools are focused on road memorization and test taking and examinations, and there's limited focus placed on learning how to think, learning how to learn, critical thinking, problem solving, and these are quite essential to the reward. So because of these infrastructure challenges, it makes it difficult for tribe and generally organizations and companies in Liberia to really grow to the extent which is, 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 is possible within their, their potential. And beyond that point, you know, funding is always a challenge, especially in the, an ecosystem like Liberia. And whenever you're pioneering a new model, which we are, it's often difficult to mobilize the kinds of resources you need initially. But as of now, the results we've gathered definitely demonstrate that there's a lot of potential in the work and hopefully we can overcome most of these this year. In the past three years, what we have done, first, our theory of changes is very simple. We, we do believe that when you combine insight and innovation, you can improve outcomes. And so we have a simple formula that says insight plus innovation is equal improved outcomes and not necessarily just creating a program for the sake of creating a program. And so the first one and a half year to two years of our uh, formation, we primarily conducted research across understanding Liberia's learning framework in the second education space. We also were engaging with stakeholders to understand what programs that existed before, what the gaps were, and how we could intervene in those, in those areas. Two ways that eventually the country, the Ministry of Education and, and partners have been addressing these issues it is, this issue is that we focus on enrollment, so we want to ensure that many young people who are school age are in school. But there's less than 20% of people who enroll in the primary level eventually who graduate high school. So majority of young people are still not even finishing high school in Liberia. And then the, the second part is that we focus also on tertiary institutions. We want to create programs that ensure that college students are becoming employable or they're accessing jobs. But if we are not ensuring that students are staying in school, how do we keep pushing more students into the school pathway? Because the pathway to ensure that they are retained is broken. So we must first strengthen that pathway before we continue to influx more young people. The second part is if many young people are not going to college and finishing, all the efforts are on, or most of the efforts are on tertiary institutions. That means we're leaving a huge portion of young people between primary enrollment and high school graduation. So what do we do with this huge population? And that's where we have come into work. So our work, our research has already uncovered a lot of this gap. And we are now designing programs that sort of bridge this gap. In the last year, we recruited 42 fellows into our pilot model, Renovate. And towards the end of the program, we saw about 50% of our students got paid internship in high school, which is an unusual case for high school students. And of that 50% of the Students who are on internship, we saw about 20% who got full-time employment uh, after the internship, you know, and we, we thought maybe this program was just a program to expose our students to the real world and to opportunities. We didn't think that it was equipping them with the kinds of skills that would make them quite employable early on until we assessed our partners and, and we realized that students are definitely cultivated their critical thinking and problem solving skills. And beyond that, learn things like research, communications, uh, collaboration that they've now been able to translate into uh, skills that they use at their, their workplace. And we are we improving that model in the next three years to ensure that we build a replicable and scalable model that can be adopted by the government and, and even more schools in Liberia. So the work we do is, is deeply personal to myself, to every member of, of our team. And I must state that any of us here on the team could have been doing something completely different with our lives at this point in time. 
you know, we are highly qualified and competent young people, highly educated. And that means we are attractive to decent uh, employment opportunities and to make you know, a huge amount of money. But we made all the personal sacrifices and made the trade up to actually do this right now because we all suffer the effect of a broken education system. And so personally, there's been lots of growth. Just one. The first is building in a resource constrained environment. It makes you to be more resilient, to be more innovative because you have to figure almost everything out all of the time. But also there's a deep connection to the students we work with when you realize that young people have so much talent and so much potential and they have big dreams. But just without programs like these, they probably would never realize those dreams and they probably wouldn't ever get to the point where they experience what it feels like to actually realize your, your full potential. It's a very, very magical process and that's something we do every day. We love it, we enjoy it, and I think that's something that's very hard to compete with. I think entrepreneurial qualities will depend on the, firstly, the environment you work with because you have to be quite adaptable to where, where you work. In my experience more generally, there are a few things. One, the first and foremost is you have to be crazy enough to, to think that your idea is going to work, especially if you work in an environment like, like Liberia, where a lot of the factors are posed against you to fail. And so you have to really challenge the odds. You can count quite many successful ventures here in Liberia that are created by young Liberians in Liberia over the last 10 years. And the, the second thing is, is just kindness. You know, you have to be kind enough to, to do the work because when you work in an environment like this with the students you work with, many times you're frustrated. And if you're not kind enough of a, of a person to, to understand and have empathy uh, for the people you work with and, and just the environment you work in, you can easily give up. The, the third one, obviously, is also building competence. There's one thing to have the passion and the, or the compassion for the work. It's another thing to have the skills to really deliver on the, the work that you have to do. And so really having a combination of those two skill set is, is, is equally, equally important. Um, and I think most of the other ones are just things that, you know, you can always find everywhere, you know, learn how to communicate, you know, collaborate, um, but be a critical thinker, be a problem solver. And, and, and these are essential skills I think entrepreneurs uh, have to have. My favorite part of being an entrepreneur is the freedom you have. That's the most important thing. You are not restricted to a traditional route. You are not limited to working hours. You work whenever, however. It's, it's beautiful when you can actually determine what do I do today? What do I do tomorrow? My least favorite part is just the, the part where you have to vulnerably put yourself out there as an entrepreneur. Because initially, the, the work you do is mostly about you as a person. Until you build the credibility and relevance of the venture itself, then that transitions. But you still are the, the first image of, of the institutions. But also, the second favorite part is just working with amazing, amazing people, truly amazing people who, who make you know, sacrifices that you can imagine. Being able to curate you know, your space and the conditions of your work in a more flexible approach is something that I do enjoy a lot. Yeah, we have a very ambitious plan for, for Tribe. We did a, an informal assessment and typically it takes a lot of ventures about eight to 10 years to fully establish in Liberia, considering all of the challenges that ventures are faced with. And so in the next five to seven to 10 years, we see Tribe as a preeminent learning innovation accelerator here in Liberia, wherein we are supporting and, and creating uh, innovative models that improve learning outcomes. We're hoping that we're able to build, renovate in a way that can be adopted by government because the end goal is how do we integrate entrepreneurial work skills into our national curriculum. That's something that, that's very important. The last time we checked the, the national curriculum is it contains lots of outdated you know content for, for young students which also points towards why many young people are not really learning the kinds of skills that, that make them productive or relevant to the workforce. What advice? Trust and believe in God first. Uh, he's done it. He always will. That's my, my first one. Um, you know, pray hard, then hustle. 
The, the second thing is that entrepreneurship is really hard. You have to really define for yourself what is the intent or the purpose of doing this. Is it just, you know, personal fame? Is it just because I like the concept of entrepreneurship? But this, this shit can be really hard. And so you have to really understand what you, you get into uh, to do it. And that's the only way we can sustain it. Uh, there are more important things than just being technically skilled. The part that you have to be a human, the part you have to be resilient, the part you have to be adaptable. And the final point is I think a lot of entrepreneurs and young people in general should really focus on being relevant than just being, being popular. Because anybody can be popular, but not everybody can be relevant. Our work is really on creating pathway for young people. So when you leave high school, we're not saying everyone should be an entrepreneur or everyone should go to college. We're saying people should have options to choose from three pathways. You can either go to college, you can either be an entrepreneur, start your own venture, or you can get a job. But the crux of this, of this pathway model is that we are equipping young people with the necessary tools so that they are fully equipped to make this choice themselves. The reason we focus on entrepreneurship is, again, it's not to ensure that every young person we work with becomes an entrepreneur, but we emphasize more so the entrepreneur mindset, the entrepreneur mindset of critical thinking and problem solving and curiosity and constant innovation. So these are things we think are not only relevant to entrepreneurs, but should be relevant and should be accessible to every young person. And oftentimes the reason we focus on entrepreneur and mainly offline programs is because technology interventions are built with assumptions that its consumers or its customers have uh, three things, access, tools, and infrastructure. And so these are access to devices, smart devices. These are access to you know, electricity, internet, smartphones, um, and so forth. But in Liberia, first and foremost, we have internet penetration of less than 30%. I'm probably being conservative with that, with that figure. At the same time, we did an assessment with our students in the, in the first year because initially we had less than 30% engagement rate. And we were wondering why do we have such low engagement rate? We spent our, we spent months building this program. We invested thousands of dollars into this program. It's free of charge to the students who work with. Why are they not participating? And so immediately because of that frustration, we thought maybe we should, you know, kick them out of the program or, or shut the program down. But we went and did an assessment and we built a model called the economic tier system wherein we said what is required for our students to succeed in the program. So we have three categories, unfavorable, favorable and moderate. And we wanted to understand what qualified them to succeed in the program. So that they have access, that they have uh, abilities, that they have resources. So that include, you know, smartphone and on all these things, even though the program is offline, but you did require some of these tools to, to, to do the program. And so because of that, we adapted the model to ensure that we reallocate our budget to provide them transportation or communications. We expand our office space so that our students come over and use the computers we had here in the, in the working spaces. So when we think about innovation and we think about technology and we think about transforming systems, we have to think about what are the context and conditions for the people we are serving. And without understanding that local context, that's why a lot of technological in innovation interventions fail because they are not quite aligned and relevant to the local conditions. So I think Innovation is, is more than just technology. It's really about how we're adapting our tools so that they're serving the communities in a more relevant way. And that's something that has been cool to the work that we do here at Tribe. The culture is, is quite adaptable and flexible. And some of the most interesting things I think we have, so we don't subscribe to a regular nine to five working hours. We work before and beyond. Uh, we work on weekends, sometimes overnight, which is quite exciting. Uh, it's not a mandatory thing. We eat together every day. So we, we cook our own food here. And so we all share meal every day. So it kind of gives us insight into, you know, the kinds of th other things that, that people like, you know, who's the, the best eater, I think. Uh, I think that's Joshua probably. Uh, and we celebrate our birthday, so every time that somebody's birthday, we do a little get together, we sing and we do karaoke. And yeah, I think I've won the award for the best performer a few times. Uh, and yeah, we do end of year activities and, and awards to the team just to inspire people to keep being engaged and, and learning and, and growing and developing. 
I try, we are up to some really big things this year and next year. Uh, in the next three to five years, uh, in really reimagining secondary education and building an entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so we are looking forward to, to collaborating more with, with uh, stakeholders in Liberia and beyond, but also just sharing the insights that, that we have. And so we invite you know, the audience to, to join us and, and follow the work that we do and support it in any way we can. We are definitely open to collaborating more across the ecosystem to ensure that we are expanding our work and, and, and strengthening and improving you know, learning outcomes, entrepreneur uh, growth, and, and just expanding social impact in, in general. Tribe is online. You know, we, our website is www.weareatribe.org. Uh, our Facebook is Tribe Liberia. Instagram is underscore we are a tribe. Twitter is underscore we are a tribe and LinkedIn is, is tribe. And we are becoming more social media active this year. And we've been sharing lots of content and we hope the audience can join us and continuously engage with the work that, that we do. Thank you for taking the attribute. Absolutely. It's been a great pleasure. Hello, I'm Manchella, a fellow of Brino Bay Tribe and a student of BW Harris Episcopal High School. Manjela, how did you get to know about Tribe? Well, I first got into a connection with Tribe. We went on our campus and they were looking for students to impact their lives and entrepreneurial skills. Yeah, and then we did some um, essays, writing, and application for Tribe and Hopefully, I was among the few students that were accepted. So, which of the program did you do on the tribe? We did a lot of programs on tribe. We did case studies, seminars, uh, learning excursion, where we went to different places to see what has happened. Like we went at the museum as well to see what has happened in the past. And then we had a facilitator who goes to our school and teach us what needed to be taught like the case that is on businesses and other stuff. He also gave assignment to take home and bring it back the next day. So for, from your experience with Tribe, so let's say I'm a, I'm a student, how will I be part of Tribe? Um, Tribe goes to various schools and tell people what they are all about. And if the school is interested and the student as well are interested, they will apply, and then if you are successful in the application, you'll be accepted. Okay. So how has Tribe impacted your life positively? Well, Tribe has impacted my life a lot. I can say for the setting we are in right now, in the country we are in, people like me, it's very difficult like to have a job at this age. But going through the learning process of from Tribe, the case study and the seminars we have been to as well, we all came successfully in the seminar and the um, learning case excursion, study. the case study, yeah. And then they didn't just put anyone out for internship, but they gave you something to, to test your ability. They gave um, a application for the internship. And then if you are successful, you come for an interview and then interview you and you successfully take you to your favorite area where you're supposed to do your internship. It has been helpful to me because I've experienced what it is to work somewhere and I've learned a lot from that place so I work. are you currently working? Yes, I am. Where? Royal Grand Hotel. Oh, Royal Grand Hotel? Yes, sir. As, as what? As an hostess. Oh. And you, you learn all this from Tribe? Yes, I've learned the skill from Tribe and I apply it there and also I've learned something from where I work. Because as an hostess, you have to be um, polite in talking to people and also you have to keep a smile on always. Like when customers come in, you welcome them and give them a seat and also a menu and tell them what you have for the day. It was nice talking to you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.